I want to bring some movement, to bring more pioneering spirit, to tell to people, stop to complain and act. The future is unpredictable, so it requires from us to be disruptive. My name is Bertrand Picard. I'm a medical doctor, a psychiatrist, an explorer. What I love to explore is the outer world, of course, flying around the world non-stop in a balloon, flying around the world in a solar-powered airplane, but also the inner world, especially in terms of protection of the environment and climate action. Climate Impulse is a project to fly around the world non-stop with zero emissions in a two-seater hydrogen-powered airplane. And I want to do that because I'm completely fed up of all the people who say there is no hope, there are no solutions, and I want to show that solutions exist. I want to restore hope. I want to show that we can achieve the impossible if we have pioneering spirit, if we change the paradigms, if we invent new ways about the solutions for climate action. The goal this time is really to make a revolution in aviation and show that we can decarbonize the most difficult sector to address. With Solar Impulse, it was a flight around the world with zero emissions, but 16 stopovers in an aeroplane that had 72 meter wingspan, bigger than the Jumbo jet. So it was a demonstration of what could be achieved with renewable energies and clean technologies. It started from Abu Dhabi, came back to Abu Dhabi, so really linked to the spirit of the United Arab Emirates. Climate Impulse with hydrogen is a plane that will fly faster, about 200 kilometers per hour, two-seater, more compact, of course more heavy, but more operational. You have to understand that the hydrogen will be liquid at minus 253 degrees, close to the absolute zero. So the tank has to be really well insulated, but it takes big volume. So the plane will be built around both tanks of hydrogen. This is why there will be two fuselage, and the wing who is crossing the two fuselage will hold the small cockpit for Rafael Dinelli and I, the two pilots. Rafael building the plane uh, will be, of course, flying with me. It's always good to have the constructor of the plane inside to fly, you know, it shows he trusts it. <laughs> it's a plane that's going to fly roughly at 10,000 feet between the equator and the northern tropic. So we will be quite closely in contact with the countries we will fly, with schools, universities, governments, the population, it's a way to be very present to the people and to be able to spread this mes message of hope, of solutions, of action for better quality of life. There is a big question about what is really carbon neutral. It's a bit controversial because you absorb the CO2 from the atmosphere or from wherever, and then you can combine it with hydrogen to make electrofuel, or you take cooking oil or waste in order to make a fuel. But in this case, you have CO2 that is already absorbed or stored. So neutrality of sustainable aviation fuel is a bit disputable, and it depends where you start the cycle. But with hydrogen, you are outside the cycle of carbon to have absolutely clean electricity that will electrolyze the water to produce hydrogen. And then the hydrogen is used inside the airplane, but it can be a train, can be a boat, can be a heavy truck, but it is put through a fuel cell that will give back the electricity and the water. The water can be drunk by the pilots and the electricity will drive the electric motors. So you have the full efficiency of an electric propulsion, and you have absolutely no carbon emissions. I 
I really want to show that solutions exist, that a good use of technology is useful, and to restore hope for all the people who think that the problem of climate and environment is so big that nothing can be done. You know, I'm really fed up of eco-pessimism, of eco-anxiety, of inaction. I want to, to bring some movement, to, to bring more pioneering spirit, to tell to people, stop to complain and act. And uh, if we don't change the paradigms, if we don't change our way of thinking, if we don't change our way of doing, of dealing with solutions, dealing with politics, dealing with social issues, we will never be the ones who are going to make this better future. So pioneering spirit has to be everywhere, but you need flagships, and Climate Impulse is one of them. My experience in psychiatry, psychotherapy, showed me that nobody really wants to change spontaneously. People resist to change. They want the others to change, not to change ourselves. So what do we have to do? We have to show that it will be better afterward than it is now. We have to show that there is enough confidence to change, that there are solutions to change. So you need to make change enjoyable. You need to inspire the wish to change. And for this, you absolutely need to use the language of the people you want to convince. If you come to the industry, to the economical world, the finance, the politic, and you say protection of the environment is expensive, it's boring, it's uh, sacrificial, you have to degrow the economy, you have to reduce mobility, reduce comfort, it will never work. So you need to take the language of the key decision makers, the new way to envisage climate action will be profoundly beneficial for job creation, for economical growth, for profit, for the, for the image of the company, for the image of the politicians. And this was not so easy before because solutions did not really exist. But what we have seen with the Solar Impulse Foundation is that there are thousands of solutions that are economically profitable to protect the environment. And this is what can inspire this wish to change, to show that the world can be more efficient. So I think this is the real core message we have to give. And it just shows that ecology can be at the core of the economic development instead of being an obstacle to economic development. There has always been major disruptions in the history of humankind. And I really would like Climate Impulse to be one of these disruptions, to go into something where a lot of people don't believe it can be achieved and show that you can do it. Take the most difficult sector to decarbonize like aviation and show that you can fly decarbonized. And then, of course, the legacy is not just to have Climate Impulse doing a big aeronautical first. You need to be with Climate Impulse like a test bench for big airplane constructors to use these systems to transport 200 passengers. Airbus has the goal to have hydrogen airplanes by 2035 to transport passengers. And I would like Climate Impulse to be like the, the link between now and the future that will allow this decarbonization of aviation. The future is unpredictable and uncertain. So it requires from us to be disruptive. So you see that innovation is not so much when you invent new ideas. Innovation comes when you get rid of old beliefs. And then you have the mindset open enough to do something completely different. After two years of design, we're now in the very exciting phase of building the plane for the next two years, molding the composite materials. When the plane will be molded, 
We will uh, make the test flight after assembling it, of course. Two years of test flying. And then 2028, if everything goes well, the flight around the world should last about nine days. It's much more than nine days of flight. It's the fact of showing how liquid hydrogen can be used and if it can be done in the sky, it can be done everywhere. For heavy trucks, for boats, for trains, and of course for steel industry, for fertilizer industry, for all these sectors that until now have no real solution to, to be carbon neutral. When you speak of safety for hydrogen, the first thing is to say that it's not so dangerous. You know, hydrogen alone doesn't burn. You need a mix of hydrogen and oxygen, which is exactly the same type of safety measures that you have for kerosene. Basically, we know quite well how to manage these things. What we need, of course, is to avoid the leaks. This is why we need a good construction mainly a good construction for all the pipes, all the tubes, the tightness of the fuel cell and so on. But I'm not afraid of flying with hydrogen. I'm much more afraid of living in a world that burns one million tons of oil every hour, changes the climate, destroys biodiversity, makes pollution everywhere. This is dangerous. But if I fly zero emission, I tell you, I, I think it's much safer. <laughs> If you speak of the future of hydrogen for aviation, the major challenge is to scale up. So you need enough clean electricity to hydrolyze water and make hydrogen. Today, it's mainly startups who are doing it, and you need major producers to do it. But it's very good diversification for the oil and gas companies. Then, of course, you need in the airports to have this liquid in special tanks in order to feed the airplanes. And then, honestly, I think you will not have very soon trans-oceanic flights with 400 passengers on hydrogen. Probably it will be more medium haul, 100 or 200 passengers. But there is something that is really disruptive for hydrogen, is to make suborbital flights. It means instead of having an airplane, you have almost like a rocket. You go to 80 kilometers high, you cut the engine maybe after 20 minutes, and you can go from Abu Dhabi to Australia in less than two hours, you know? And you can be also zero emissions. So that's also a, a way to imagine the future of aviation that is much more linked to the conquest of space. Sheikh Zayed has a fantastic history of pioneering the United Arab Emirates. And now it's the same spirit that continues with the Zayed Sustainability Prize, inspiring young people to be innovators, to bring solutions for better quality of life in general. So I think this prize is essential for the inspiration in innovation, but also in inspiration of how to use the solutions that get the prize to the advantage of a maximum of people. And what I've seen in the past is that millions of people have benefited from the solutions who received the Zayed Sustainability Prize. So it's useful, really useful. When you are a student or when you're in school, you believe that innovation is only made by genius scientists in a very big and very rich research lab. And sometimes you are too shy to believe in your own ideas, to believe in your own skills. And what I love with the Zayed Sustainability Prize is that it gives opportunity to non-professional innovators to take confidence into what they can invent and to their imagination, to their creativity, and put them at the same level 
than big researchers. To have more innovators, you help to, to raise the level of imagination of a lot of children and young students. My Solar Impulse Foundation is identifying solutions that are economically profitable to protect the environment. So there's a good link with the price. And when the solutions we identify meet the solutions from the price, of course, we can all learn from each other and promote these solutions together to have more adopters using them. Because at the end, that's the goal. The solutions have to come on the market and do good for everyone. I enjoyed, of course, being part of the selection committee for the prize, but what is even more important is to be part of a network altogether and do good altogether.